My name is Kyle Smith. I am a product and go-to-market manager for Vodacom's Consumer Internet of Things, and I'm also the LGBT network chairperson. I think we need to think about gender-based violence as more than just physical. I think when we look at the term violence, we often think it's, it's somebody hitting someone or you know, potentially doing something harmful to that person physically. But a lot of the time, the violence that occurs in GBV um, is not really always physical. It can be discrimination, it can be shaming of a person before the particular gender or the way that they behave in that gender role. And just also bodily autonomy, um, not allowing people to have a right to their own body and to you know, how they want to be seen or perceived. So from an LGBT perspective, uh, unfortunately there's a lot of non-acceptance within the LGBT community. I always find it quite odd how LGBT people want to be accepted by the greater community around them, including heterosexual and cisgender people. And we are not very tolerant of each other. Um, topics that come to mind are things like trans shaming. Um, a lot of LGBT people feel that transsexual people are not you know, allowed the same rights as they, are, you know, they should be allowed. Which is very sad because trans people have a very, very tough time not only dealing with the fact that they are LGBT, but the fact that they are not comfortable with the body that they were given from birth. There's a huge femme shaming movement in the LGBT community as well, specifically amongst um, LGBT men. Um, they feel as if a man should be behaving in a certain masculine way um, and that there is some sort of manual that explains to you what a masculine or a straight person should behave like. There's this idea that they need to conform to a heterosexual norm you know, of behaving, which is very odd because I've never ever come across a book that explains how a heterosexual male or how a straight acting person should behave. And unfortunately, where there are feminine LGBT people, uh, specifically LGBT men, they are often shamed for the way that they behave or for the way that they want to you know, express themselves. Some people dress up as drag queens and they like to perform, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to be a woman. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think we need to get over this idea that straight acting is a thing, because what is straight acting? It's quite sad that people seem to think that they are allowed to judge how another person can behave or how they can look, and that they should automatically be discriminated or removed from any kind of societal activity just because they don't fit a certain uh, bodily, uh, you know, preconceived idea of what a body should look like. I think LGBT people generally deal with two forms of violence. They deal with the actual violence, whether it be physical or um, some sort of a shaming. The other form of violence that they experience or, uh, you know, an unfortunate part of what they go through is not being able to report it a lot of the time to people you know, in the police services um, because of the fact that they are also not sensitized to LGBT matters. So they deal with the crime and then they deal with the fact that they're probably not going to be able to report this crime because if they go to the police and they explain to them that I was correctively raped or you know, I was raped in general, the police will probably laugh at them and say, well, you're not supposed to be LGBT, that's wrong and therefore we're not going to help you. Sometimes when these crimes are reported, a lot of the times they don't get investigated because it's seen that it's an LGBT crime, so therefore it's not important. Um, similarly, in the medical professions, a lot of the governmental health clinics um, are not sensitized to LGBT matters. So where lesbian women are correctively raped, they can go to the clinic and they can be refused service because they're seen as some sort of a lesser part of society or person in society. So these people deal with the aftermath of having to sometimes walk past the perpetrator on the street the next day knowing that nothing's going to be done about it and knowing that they are going to suffer the consequences potentially medically for a long time to come because they won't be able to get the health treatment that they deserve. And I think that's something that we need to highlight in the LGBT community as an extra form of gender-based violence that really needs to be taken quite seriously. Vodacom is very progressive. You should be comfortable whether you are LGBT or cisgender, heterosexual at Vodacom. We want you to be at your best. And I think us just having that network and actively supporting LGBT rights within the company and making staff aware of the fact that we will not tolerate any form of discrimination already shows that we take a stand um, and we help our employees a lot. We try and do a lot of work with communities as well, um, you know, NPOs and so on, 
to make sure that we extend that protection to people outside of the Vodacom family. Things like our Women's Network, which you know, promotes how we want women to succeed and how we want them to be treated equally with equal pay in the company, also show our support. I think it's also important that we have very, very clear policies when it comes to, as I mentioned before, discrimination. But not only that, the leave policies, and I think most importantly, a gender-based violence policy, which very clearly outlines what is GBV and how can people leaders or people managers assist someone in their team if they are going through um, any form of violence at home. Um, you know, things like flexible working hours, which are all very, very important things that go a long way to assisting Vodacom staff uh, with things like GBV if they are dealing with it. It's a very difficult question to answer because, I mean, what do you really say to someone who has committed a crime like that and, and taken away someone else's dignity? What I would say to them, however, is LGBT people are here to stay. We're not going to go away. We've been around for centuries and we were born this way. So you trying to correctively rape someone is not going to change that person's inherent attraction for whoever they're attracted to. So you're not achieving anything. If anything, you are just violating that person with no good reason. What I would encourage you to do um, as part of your repayment to society is go and learn about LGBT people. Go and work with organizations that support LGBT people because I think your ignorance will be challenged, let's put it that way. I think you will see that there are a lot of very, very successful and interesting LGBT people out there and maybe you'll learn something from that experience and you should use it then to influence anyone who's in your influential circle going forward. So there are a lot of organizations that obviously support LGBT people in South Africa and we're very lucky to have a very open constitution that allow, gives us legal rights effectively. I would encourage those people to approach such organizations. There are specific LGBT clinics that focus on LGBT health matters. There are organizations like Help for Men um, Out, which are all geared towards specifically supporting the LGBT community. And I would you know, recommend those people reach out to those organizations. Vodacom also sponsors a gender-based violence call center. And I would really encourage people to reach out to that call center to get as much assistance as they possibly can. I think it's important to be the light and to take an active stance against uh, anything that might be perceived as offensive to someone, specifically in the LGBT community. You know, often we are not necessarily aware of unconscious biases and we sometimes say things that we don't think about. And I think it's important for when we either hear that being said by someone, or if we maybe say it and someone approaches us and says, you know what, that's actually not a nice thing to say. We should take that feedback, um, not as a, you know, them attacking us, I think we should take it seriously. And similarly, if someone says something around you, be active and say, you know what, actually I don't think you should say that because it's not something that somebody else might want to hear and you need to think about the words that you use when you're talking about this particular topic. Holding ourselves accountable, holding other people accountable around us, and just using our circle of influence to make sure that whoever is in that circle sees how we are holding each other accountable and you know how we, we look at it and how we, we don't tolerate those kinds of things.